Well, Anglo-American Chief Executive Cynthia Carroll will step down. The news grabbed headlines this morning and comes as a bit of a, a information in a sector that has been plagued by labor unrest in recent months uh, that has taken markets by surprise. For a look at the industry, joining me at the desk this afternoon is South Africa's Minister of Mineral Resources, Susan Shabango. Minister, thanks so much for joining us and glad that you could uh, make it in time before we wrapped up the show. Let's get straight into the news that's come to the fore, the stepping down of the CEO of Anglo-American. I mean, this comes, uh, you know, after we had uh, CEO Cynthia Carroll in South Africa last week for high-level meetings with government. She highlighted that the government has a sense of urgency. They understand the situation in the mining sector in South Africa is ultra-serious and the solutions will not come from one organization or the private sector. It will be about engagement. How surprised are you at the announcement that's come through this afternoon? Well, I must say that um, one is surprised by her announcement of stepping down, but I had an opportunity of talking to her. Uh, she indicated that she's been uh, in the helm of uh, Anglo-American for the last five years or seven years. And she thought it's important for her to move on, uh, but also she will continue playing a role until the Anglo finds a CEO. But also that brings comfort because by virtue of Anglo allowing her to be there for a while, it also means that it will also bring stability and create an opportunity of a phasing out of her in the sector. So where speculations are that the pressure just got a little bit too much, your impressions, there's more, uh, you know, just a decision in terms of the next step in her career path. Well, I think all of us, as we know, in whatever we're doing in life, at some point you'll have to exit a particular space. And I think she's said to me that she's reached that point where she thinks she's done contribution her contribution within that, but also she will continue playing a role within the mining industry. And she will continue to work in the South African space. She hopes that she will contribute positively. As we speak, she indicated that she will be coming back to South Africa. So I think that also brings comfort to say she will be part of us, she will contribute, mm -hmm. but also she's one of the people who feel strongly that uh, as South Africa, we also need to have transformation and change in the mining industry and she will continue to be an advocacy for transformation in the South African mining well, industry. Well, before we take a closer look at uh, all that's going on in the mining sector, I mean, we've had Anglo-American always having been led by a South African, and that until uh, we had Cynthia Carroll mm -hmm. take to the helm. Uh, to what extent do uh, you, as Minister of Mines, see this possibly as an opportunity, a window uh, for you to have a view on the successor, that this successor be South African? Well, I think that's one of the things which we've engaged in, not only with Cynthia, but also we've expressed our views in the past, even when they were appointing the chairman. We did raise an issue with Anglo-American, given that it's a South African-created company. We would like to see them having a South African person at a very senior level. And I think this creates another opportunity. I would also say part of it is Cynthia leaves Anglo. We will definitely engage with Anglo in making sure that as South Africa, they should consider us as a candidate. We think we have a lot of people who are competent enough to fill the position of the CEO at the group level. Any hints as to who those possible candidates would well, be? Well, I cannot say who could be the possible candidate because it's something new. But in the past, we had bounced some names about who could be the chairman. But now we're talking about the CEO. We've got to apply our minds as a country and say, we want somebody who will serve the interest of the country. But a person who will be able to serve South Africa globally in a way that makes us and occupy that space within the global environment. Of course, this in a context where there's been a lot of question marks around the mining sector specifically. I mean, we've had uh, Cynthia Carroll herself emerging, not too positive about the state of the mining sector locally. She made uh, public comments on uh, the wildcat mining strikes. And one of the things she highlighted was that the mining sector would remain in turmoil until the government took a firm stance to ensure that normality actually returned. What's your view on where we're at right now? No. I must say that where we're at now with South Africa, we've taken a firm step. If you look at the current situation, the meeting of by president convening all business uh, people in South Africa, including the labor, labor and civil society, and being able to come up with a package which intends to stabilize South Africa. But also we need to recognize that there are challenges in South Africa, challenges of unemployment, challenges of skills development. They do inform the current situation within the mining industry. They might have played themselves in that particular space, but it's a broader challenge for us as a country. 
and the position taken by the president of bringing all parties mm -hmm. to say, what is it that we need to do as South Africa? And coming out with the package last week, Friday, it's a sign of a positive leadership, a sign of leadership which it's prepared to handle and take whatever issues which it confronts in a way that comes up with solutions. While we make that progress and find those kind of solutions, we've got uh, stats coming through from the UN, for example, highlighting that foreign direct investments into South Africa tumbled 43.6% in the first half of this year, and that compared to the same period last year. How worried does that make Well, you? it is a cause for concern, but also you must bear in mind that South Africa is not an island. South Africa is part of the global environment. There's turbulence globally, mm -hmm. and we are not immune from that. You know, we are very much aware, for instance, that 37% of our trading partners are in Europe. We know what's going on in Europe, and that has a direct bearing on how we perform as a country. So I think uh, whilst we might be having our own local challenges, but the bigger part of it is contributed by the global environment itself. Mm -hmm. And we are prepared to look at that. That is why some of the issues we are saying that as a country, we also need to look at new opportunities, new markets, new trading partners, precisely to make sure that we diversify our economy, we diversify our interest, so as to ensure that we can stabilize our local situation where we are. We are positive. It's a short-term issue. It will be resolved. You are aware that the mining companies, through the Chamber of Mines and Labor, they've reached some consensus, and we see the mining industry going back to normality. So it was more of a turbulent of a short term, but the broader impact globally reflects that we are not an island, we are part of that. If you listen to the Minister of Finance yesterday, where we are as a country, we are a country which has challenges, but we are a stable country, we are a country which has opportunities for growing our economy. And when we overcome, I think globally, the situation of global challenges, South Africa will come out being the best because we are positioned to do that. It's a very competitive landscape, though, and where you highlight global turmoil. I mean, we've had the HP Bulletin, for example, just today saying that it's calling on governments to support the industry's efforts to slash costs in the face of cooler demand, asking them to rein in on demands like royalties, taxes, regulations. I mean, how much of a helping hand can you offer? Well, BHP cannot go public. We're engaging with them. They also have, must understand, as an old company in this country, they can't expect us to slash royalties in public. We have to engage. There are issues of how they're performing. What is it that they're bringing on the table? So it can't be a public statement. Let them come to the regulator and engage with the regulator so that we can put things into proper context. It cannot just be a call from one side. It should be a balanced approach. And whatever consensus we reached, as we have done in the past, have to be informed by the situation in a balanced way.